just before we get started lovely peaches if you enjoy these videos maybe you want to consider i don't know subscribing it super duper helps me out most of the people that regularly watch these videos are not subscribed it's totally free to do so you can just click that little button and would really help me keep this channel going no pressure if you don't want to just let you know that it's there all right hi peaches it's shovel welcome back to my channel and thank you for clicking on another video it's monday and you know what that means it's time for us to dive deep into the subreddit am i the a-hole why because it's a little bit of fun it's a little bit of juicy drama we can hopefully help a couple people out whilst expanding our own mindsets along the way grab a cup of settle down let's go fish and loop. am i the drama for quitting 20 minutes before my shift Ooh. see i don't know how this works in every scenario but to me that sounds like something that just wouldn't be allowed to do if you quit your job you have to give notice mind you i've always worked in sort of like smaller companies or companies that have smaller teams where if that one person was missing that would make quite a difference do you know what i mean that sounds kind of elitist and it came out funny i'm talking about jobs where if one person quit their role would need a replacement quite quickly for the business to keep functioning in the way that it did does that make sense i for example ran a summer school as one of my jobs at the university i was the sole person doing that and if i didn't give my full notice and i quit 20 minutes before my shift there would be no one to run the summer school which in my mind is very different to if you for example are working in a supermarket there's so much more of the sense of teamwork so if one person goes nope i'm leaving then the rest of the business is likely going to function as normal all this to say that i think it's contextually dependent but in that second situation I didn't see it being a problem. In the first situation, could be, especially because your notice periods are likely going to be like multiple months, right? Anyway, let's read. We need to back up, says OP, to eight months ago when I first started. I'm a great worker, never late, always asking for things to do when we're slow. Oh, you're one of those. I love that for you. I'm happy for you. I always remember this one thing that my, it wasn't even a boss, but like a colleague said to me, actually in that summer school job, they were like, Sharba, you get paid the same salary, whether you work to an A star standard or a C and you don't owe this business anything. And I also think that's an important message. There's got to be a balance somewhere in between, right? I ask my manager every few weeks for feedback or constructive criticism. Oh, wow. You're like teacher's pet level employee. I see you. I always get told that she has no notes. The only frustrating thing at this point is last minute schedules, as in the schedule is released on Sunday for the very next day. Oh, I can see why that's very frustrating. And you know, it works both ways. If you're asking for feedback and constructive criticism, know that you as an employee can also give feedback and constructive criticism that is not appropriate to get literally a day of notice for your next week's what what we'll read on frequently i will get off work on a sunday and not know my shift for the next day eventually things settle and i'm working the same shifts every week in april i requested a day off for july okay so uh, me, 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 gee, three months. <laughs> i requested it more than 90 days in advance and i never heard anything back so i assumed it was approved because she'd tell me if it wasn't right no <laughs> no we know what they say about assumptions. They make an ass out of you. I do think something as integral as leave because you don't want to get into any workers, battles, whatever. There's always a set procedure in place and that set procedure will never tell you, oh, well, if you don't hear anything back, it's probably fine. No, it's going to tell you that you need written permission on a piece of paper signed by Feathered Ink Owl, something ridiculous like that. So already I'm kind of, I'm, I'm thinking about my badge because you're like, ah, she would have told me, right? Like, I also don't know where you work and that's really important because if it's just like one employee or a team of two or three employees that's very different to if you're working in like a supermarket where the manager runs like 150 employees because they're not going to remember how do you know they've seen it how do you know that no no we don't make that assumption bad OP bad OP well the schedules are released Sundays so I got my schedule and I see that I'm scheduled for next Sunday the day that I requested I am appalled she had 90 days to get it covered or tell me that it isn't approved but doesn't yes but also mistakes happen sometimes did you chase up? Were there no conversations about it? Were you not like, huh, I asked for this day three months in advance. I haven't heard back from you. Maybe after like a month to be like, hmm, have you taken a look at my leave request? Two months. Hmm, have you taken a look at my leave request? Even like the week before where you got your schedule, I guess this is the point that you're at now. Right? But yeah, let's read on. How is that fair? Says OP. I bring it up and she tells me that it's my responsibility to get the shift covered or get a write up for not coming in. Oh, very annoying because you did clearly do it in advance. And one half of me is like, oh, well, at least she's not saying you can't come in but the other half of me is like well she kind of is because she's like if you can't get it fixed like the onus is on you otherwise you will get a write-up which is obviously a negative consequence that nobody really deserves especially if it was an administrative area i want to know why why did she not approve it within those three months fine says op i try to get it covered but i'm unable to 
and I also can't skip my plans outside of work. So I skip work and I get a writer. I go to check my schedule that night for the next day and the app isn't working. So I just assume these assumptions OP that my schedule is the same as always because to me, a good manager would warn me if my schedule is going to be different. No, no, that's not how it works. What the frick is up with OP? Who says that? If you know that your schedule does change and you're like, well, the app wasn't working, so I didn't see it. So I'm guessing it's the same as last week, even though, you know, it's, it's not like you work a nine to five where every week your hours are Monday to Friday nine to five. No, no, you work shift work. You don't just assume. This is really bugging me. You say a good manager would warn me if my schedule is going to be different. They do. It's called the schedule. That's why you look at it. They don't need to give you a schedule and then call you and be like, hello, employee. Yes. Did you, are you, are you reading this? No, that's why there are processes. Oh, the next day I get a call two hours before when I thought I had to be there asking me where the hell am I? I try to explain that the app wasn't working the night before and she snaps at me that I'm selfish and clearly I'm not there because my schedule isn't what I want. Okay. That is also an assumption. Sounds like a lot of people making assumptions. The other thing that it sounds like as well, which is not your fault OP, is that it's so damn stupid that the schedules are there for the day before. That doesn't work for anyone. There is a huge flaw in this system as well, which is if you're not working on that Sunday, which you're not, right? Because you've got your day off, you shouldn't even be having to check your schedule. They're making you work on your day off to check when you're in work the next time. That is just like in so many levels, not okay. I actually cannot believe that any place functions on giving that tiny amount of notice when you are not working on that Sunday. I'm certain that that would be illegal if it was taken to any kind of employment tribunal, but let's carry on. And OP says, I am pulled. I've never been late for a shift. I've only been called out the one time for a day I requested off months in advance. I go in and I'm getting nasty looks from my manager and my coworker all day. Sounds like you are in a small team. Hmm. I'm so intrigued. What do you do? No one will talk to me either. I keep trying to ask questions about work related things and I'm being ignored. No one will even listen to my side of the story. That is just playground, unprofessional bullcrap. So the next morning I'm lying in bed, not really wanting to deal with it anymore. And I get an offer letter from a job that I'd interviewed at recently. I email my now previous manager 20 minutes before I was supposed to start that I resign effective immediately. Am I the drama here? I feel like I wasn't treated very fairly in the end. There obviously was other stuff going on because I was already interviewed at other places, but I kind of feel guilty and my partner keeps telling me that I shouldn't. What do you think? Well, look, clearly because you've been interviewing at other places and you've said it, there is more to this story anyway. I think it's quite clear to me that this is an everybody sucks here situation. If I'm trying to see the whole like holistic thing, I'm going to be really honest. I find the whole thing a little bit petty. I definitely have a mindset that is different to treating work kind of am I the drama situations to personal am I the drama situations because at work you are held to a different standard. There are professional standards there for a reason to protect everybody in place. And the reason why I'm saying everybody sucks is because your manager absolutely shouldn't be having this stupid system where, as I said, you're having to work on your day off to check when your days are the next time. Also, the app wasn't working and there is this thing called human error, which clearly has happened somewhere within this approval for this day off three months in advance. And again, the freaking app isn't working. So, you know, if you've never been bad before, which is you saying you're not, why, 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 why penalize you so much for this one moment? It may be that you're not being there has had a big impact on the business. Again, we don't know what you do at the same time, unless you're doing like life threatening surgery, right? There are very few jobs out there where if you don't show up on time, the world is going to end. People really need to realize that work is still just work. I don't know if it's the capitalist society that we find ourselves in this like super hustle, productive generation vibe, but work is just taken way too far. I'm sure you've also seen them around on the internet, but there are these screenshots that people take of conversations between their managers or ex-managers. Somebody was working at a coffee shop and said that their dog had passed away and asked for the rest of the day off. And the manager was just like, no, you have to come in or else you're fired. And then they like quit their job. And then the manager was just like, how dare you? And I'm like, who in their right mind manager cannot be like human being enough to realize that if something really hard is going on in somebody's life, it is okay to take some time off of work. It's the most bizarre thing to me. So yes, manager, big sucky sucky for one, having a stupid procedure in place that makes you work when you're not supposed to work. Clearly work boundaries are not being set very well, but also too, for not allowing for genuine human mistake. It may even be right that it wasn't truly a mistake. The fact is you didn't check up on the schedule thing as well. And you just assumed even in the same post saying that that was the case, you were pissed off because you got a demerit and because your work wasn't approved when you're normally such a fantastic employee. So like, it's fine for you to act out in that way too. But at the same time, the manager has to see the woods from the trees, realizes this is the first time and get a freaking grip. At the same time though, OP, your friggin' assumptions, dude, like, you know, you know that it's not okay to just assume you've been approved for your day off, to just assume
assume that you're not working that Monday when you can't even see it. And then your whole office, place of work, wherever it is that you're working also sucks for acting like petulant children and not talking to you. Who the frick does that? For all of those reasons, everybody sucks here and you are the drama. However, specifically for quitting 20 minutes before your shift, seeing as it's a build up, I don't think that's the worst thing that you've done. I also don't think that, like, what is the consequence? You're wanting to leave the job anyway, right? You've literally been given another job offer. The only consequence to this is you really burning that bridge, which personally I do think is a little bit risky because it's a little early. If you're wanting to leave, that's fine. I would probably have sucked it up and still gone in just until you accepted the other offer, knew that everything was like a-okay, got your starting date, received a contract ready for you to sign, you know, like just, just get in those places because what happens if now for whatever reason that other job doesn't work out, you haven't negotiated things like work days or pays in ways that you really wanted to, maybe the start date gets pushed back, maybe th there's a whole myriad of things that could happen. So yeah, I think it's a little bit early, but that specific point right there I don't think is only what makes you <laughs> have part responsibility in the everybody sucks here. Should we see what other people have to say? Not the drama. Ask yourself if your employer would blink twice about firing or laying you off if hard times hit. If the answer is no, why should they expect you to give an F about them? Mm, yeah. I totally appreciate where this is coming from and I totally appreciate that a lot of employers take the piss and that is not okay. At the same time, this comment makes it sound really personal and it's not, it's just not. And I think that right there just hit the nail on the head for me as to where everybody in the situation is acting really freaking stupidly. It's business, it's not personal. Even in this situation, an employer wouldn't wanna go through hard times. If you've been hired, they wouldn't wanna let you go unless you're being bad, right? When you're saying they wouldn't blink twice about firing or laying you off, it's because everybody is a person, right? An employer having to do that is because they don't have enough money to give themselves, let alone other people. So a really hard decision has to be made. Otherwise you're not gonna get the money anyway because the business is going through hard times. And this is comment meant emotionally blink twice, which I think is a bit, I don't know, like to me, it's a little bit petty to assume that every single employer is like this and wouldn't think twice and doesn't think of you as a person like that. I've been in many jobs. I've had many employers and most of them been really nice and really kind. I really give a f about the people that I hire and I would expect some people to also give a about the job too, only to the extent that the job allows though. Of course your personal life comes first. Work is still just work. But this comment is not the one for that reason. Not the drama by a long shot, go to the new job and never look back. There are some times where on this forum, I look at these comments and I'm like, wow, in the past couple of years, the people that use this forum to give feedback, I really feel have lost a lot of perspective. It's a genuine reflection of why I've started to dislike the internet. I just feel like people are not being in any way reasonable or having any sense of perspective. The internet nowadays does a really good job at reducing people to labels only and not looking at the nuanced context of situations, which is why I think these videos are really important because they remind me to not do that, to not get stuck in the same trap. But honestly, of the information that OP has given, it's really clear that they also need to take some accountability. The employer also needs to take some accountability. I stick with my badge with the important note that employers should not be abusing the situations of employees. Of course, of course, that is a given. All right, let's go fishing once more. Floop, am I the drama for telling my parents not to speak to me after possibly stealing my medication? What is wrong with people? All right, OP is feeling quite conflicted here. I'm a 30 year old woman who was prescribed with anti-anxiety medication recently after dealing with some life altering events. I'm really sorry to hear that, my love. Yeah, you for being brave enough to seek support and for getting medication. That's a really important step. And I'm hoping that you have some stability and reassurance in your life soon. I only take it, says OP, when absolutely necessary and I have no prior history of substance use or abuse. My husband, a 29 year old man, is aware of everything and has been very supportive during this time. That's so sweet. I love to hear it. So last month I was scheduled to have a pretty major surgery in a city three hours away from where I live. My parents live closer to the hospital, so my husband and I stayed with them the night before the surgery. All sound very reasonable so far, I like your OP. I mentioned taking this medication to calm my anxiety before my surgery the next day to my mum and she had an absolute meltdown about it, begging me to throw it out and never take it again. Whoa, hang on a second, this is sounding so wonderfully ordinary. I have two questions. One, are you talking about taking the pill before your surgery specifically? See, this can be read in two 
two ways. Number one, you just said to your mum before your surgery the next day, hey, I take these pills now for when I'm anxious. Or you were taking that pill the day before your surgery in order to be less anxious. It sounds very similar, but if it's that second, I wonder if maybe mum's feeling nervous about you taking the pill before surgery specifically. Because often when you do go into surgery, they're like, mm, don't take your medication beforehand for X amount of days even. Weeks if it's a hormonal thing. So let's keep that in mind. And secondly, what has triggered mum? An absolute meltdown. Throw them away. Never take them again. Mm, something's going on there. Mum brought it up several times that night and into the morning. She came to the hospital with my husband and was questioning him about the prescription, which is just what you need as you're going into a surgery. Even from the husband's point of view, you know, like he's concerned about you. He's wanting to make sure he's ever your well-being. But no, he's got a nagging little mother-in-law on the end of his elbow. You just want to... Come on. And she was specifically asking if I took it that morning. Still not sure where mum's coming from. Post surgery, we stopped at my parents, ate dinner, took our suitcases, and went home. I didn't think anything of it. I'm assuming because you're back and eating dinner and going home that surgery went well for you, my love. I hope so. Sending good recovery vibes. Well, fast forward to a few days ago, I realized that I hadn't seen my prescription in a while. Mama took it. Mama took your pills. I went in my suitcase that I haven't used since my surgery, and I found the pill bottle sealed closed with no pills in it. That's so dumb. If your parents definitely did take your medication, why would they not just take the bottle? Why would they take the bottle, empty the bottle and put the bottle back? Unless they are gaslighting you into thinking that you have taken all of your pills or they didn't do it. Just read the title again. After possibly stealing my medication. Let's read on. This has gotten very Detective Poirot very fast. Or oh. there were originally still 13 pills out of 15 in the bottle before they went missing. So you know, probably because you remember very specifically taking two because you only take them when you need to. The anti-anxiety meds, they're new to you. This is all making sense. I've searched everywhere and I can't find them. Why would they? Why? I would understand. No, you need to search. You're right for searching. But it's very funny to me that you're searching for just loose pills. The bottle is there. The bottle is there. Hamza, Hamza. The only explanation that I can think of is either my mum took them at some point or had my dad go through my stuff and take them whilst I was in surgery. Yes, this is what my mind would also be saying, right? Have you asked husband? Have you made sure that he hasn't just, I don't know, decided that the pills needed an upgraded home? I'm so confused because the bottle is still there. I can't get over it. They keep denying it and they're pointing the finger at my husband or saying that I just lost them <laughs> again, which would be so much more plausible if the bottle was gone. But the bottle was closed in my suitcase with no pills inside. I also realised that my mum wouldn't let it go before my surgery but hasn't brought up the prescription issue since. Ooh, that is damning evidence, Detective Poirot. I see you. At the same time, I'm just trying to see it from two points of view, right? Yes, it is absolutely plausible that mum or parents may have taken pills and that is why they're not talking about it anymore or also possible the nagging was only there because you were there now that you have gone there's no more nagging either because they're like look you're living your life over there and i've forgotten about it because i'm not physically seeing you or a change in priorities has happened because you're now recovering from your surgery or mum's come to like a correct state of mind to be like you're an adult you're a 30 year old you get to decide what medication you have i've told you my qualms you don't want to listen to them it's your life babe any of those situations could be true and i think it really depends on like what kind of person your mum is which only you will know op we will not know i am so intrigued where's the bottle my parents are not good at respecting boundaries says op and they never take accountability for their wrongdoings i've been questioning them over the past few days but they won't admit it so you're suggesting that they have in the past not taken accountability for wrongdoings that's not taking accountability and lying about emptying a prescribed medication bottle are two very different things i'm so intrigued even my sisters called me to tell me that my parents definitely took it and are lying well how would they know if they're telling you that then that that is that is damning evidence right there today i told them that i won't speak to them until they admit that they've taken my medication and understand that they really crossed the line my mum told me that i'm an asshole and will regret blaming them for it whoa so am i the drama for telling my parents not to speak to me until they admit it this is freaking weird i don't know why i'm getting so spicy over a prescribed bottle of medication i do 
do know. It's because one of two things are happening. Either something really weird has happened with your medication. If your parents didn't do it, there is to be some very confusing reason. Maybe your husband is like some wah, pill ninja and is either, I don't know, like someone's taken them to sell them and is trying to gaslight you into thinking that they weren't there or maybe in some state of like post surgery recovery you with your fluffy head were like oh, i shouldn't be taking these pills and you flush them down the toilet because your mum's words like stuck in your brain like, i don't know either something really unusual is happening in that sense or your parents are hella gaslighting you and really really doubling down i don't want to know any more information that has to be my badge i need more information firstly wait i'm giving two badges it's my game it's my rules because i need to know why why is your mum so against the pills and why is your sister telling you that they definitely took it and are lying to you and what in the past have they done that in any way correlates this kind of behavior i think we kind of know what those answers are going to be right like we can assume based on what op is saying here that they don't paint parents in a very good light but even though we need more information you are not the drama because in none of those decision trees that could happen any of those potential things are you the drama i do get why someone might be like mm, i don't know you're kind of what do they say guilty until proven innocent like you're literally blaming your parents for something that you don't entirely know that they did at the same time you need to use your brain a little bit especially in moments where you could be being emotionally and psychologically abused because questioning your reality is the very first thing and the most damaging thing that people do when they are pretending when they are disguising let's let's be honest that's what it is disguising themselves as loved ones because that is not how loved ones behave no no sorry why was your mom so against it please op have you given us any more information i need to know oh someone said not the drama they shouldn't be spinning your meds did you communicate with your surgeon and anesthesiologist anesthesiologist about all medication taken prior to surgery did mum even ask a specific question before losing it as long as you weren't hiding the info which could possibly cause complications you are fine i totally agree with this if not please communicate with doctors in the future especially before surgery if this is xanax specifically they could be worried about dependence my friend had horrible seizures and an all-round horrible time getting off of them they still shouldn't be taking them from you especially when you don't have a history of drug use and only have to take them sporadically but i do have to stress to be very very careful if it is that one i appreciate where this commenter is coming from i do hear what they're saying you are also a 30 year old adult as you said with no previous history of any kind of substance abuse and your husband is there and seeming very supportive and part of that supportiveness is making sure that you're only taking them when you need to like supporting you in that sense right understanding from an objective point of view when you can't be objective about it how these pills are affecting you because sometimes especially when we're talking about hormonal balances and things that alter our brain chemistry which things like anti-anxiety meds anti-depression meds hormonal meds absolutely do it's really important to have that objective point of view to be able to tell us hey this is what it's doing to you and this is how you're feeling from somebody that you support and love because when you are in that moment you yourself cannot see it it's the exact same thing for example for adhd medication opie's actually responded to this and said oh, thank you i emailed my surgeon prior and he said it was absolutely fine cool great amazing i also told the team when i arrived it was i'm saying that right i've been prescribed ativan before doesn't medication names sound like kind of badass i kind of love it like they sound like feud that occurs between greek gods <laughs> do you imagine xanax we meet again ativan it has been a while like i just i love them i've been prescribed ativan before and it's expired before i could even finish a bottle so you, you're really not dependent on them that's a really fantastic sign right i've been having pretty bad panic attacks due to my health issues so it was only take half a pill if absolutely necessary and i communicated it to my husband every single time the strangest part is my mum is prescribed xanax what and she kept saying that she gave me that instead she has a weird thing with clonopin specifically i guess clonopin okay this is even weirder because your mum is on this kind of medication i'm so intrigued as to why but there doesn't seem to be that information and i'm really sad about it oh someone else said not the drama it sounds like your mum's manipulating the situation to make you seem like a desperate addict do not fall for her bs and stand your ground and nopi says thank you i really do feel crazy because it's so obvious and she keeps denying it when i first questioned her she said i thought you said you don't really take it anyway which i don't so she didn't mm, that's damning too <laughs> which i don't hence why a month passed before i even noticed that the bottle was empty in my suitcase wait on a side note hard relate to leaving your suitcase for a month without emptying it this would absolutely be me 
if it wasn't for Jamie. And it's absolutely something that you should also work on. Lovely OP. But I have my verdict. A very small need more information just because I'm curious, but a massive not the drama here. And I'm trying to work on reducing my moral compass. I do realise that one of my biggest biases in these videos is that from my past experiences and traumas in situations where there is a bad person, right? You can tell that someone does not have fantastic intentions. I'm very wanting to see things from everybody's point of view. And I do think that there is a place to do that, but I often do allow it to cloud my final verdict as well, where sometimes I'm like too moral compass to make a verdict that feels very fair. And I'm trying to let that go. So in this situation, what my brain is telling me is, yes, but you don't know. And maybe the parents aren't doing something bad. And maybe mum isn't the one that's taken the pill bottle and emptied it and left the freaking bottle on date. And truly maybe that is the case. But at the same time, you have clearly been very wrong, Dopey. And so despite what my brain is saying to try and be like the neutral arbiter, you are not the drama. You are not the drama and your parents absolutely are the drama and your mum's absolutely the drama and how dare, how dare she? My advice to you, OP, though, would absolutely be to have a conversation with your sibling and find out why they are so, so certain. Get something that you can have in your mind solidifying that it was your parents so that you can use this because that, that is horrible, horrible gaslighting. Use that as the prime example that you can come back to time and time again to remind yourself and warn yourself that this is what your loved one network does because if they're doing it once, there's a very high chance they're going to do it again. And that for me was like a very useful tool and patterns of behavior, being able to recognize patterns of behavior for me is the absolute golden nugget for dealing with emotional manipulation. Not the drama, how dare they? It's not only immoral, it is illegal. Not kind of illegal, but get into trouble illegal. Stay the course and go no contact until you get an apology for what they absolutely did. Oh, you are the drama. You don't know that they took your pills. You've made an assumption and an ultimatum based on that assumption. Could you be correct? Of course. Are you correct? You may never know. Ah, I do disagree with you other drama here. I have to. My own traumatized self inside is like, oh, but they have a point. I'm like, no, no. Hopefully you need to do what is right for you. You are not the drama here at all. I also totally reject that this is an ultimatum. It is not. You are setting the boundaries of not wanting to talk to somebody because even if you don't know, right, whether they have absolutely taken it, there are so many signs and they're being unbelievably rude to you, especially with what your mum said. You're like, oh, I thought you didn't take them anyway. No, 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 no. Not the drama for your reaction, but a gentle everybody sucks here. This is a wake up call and it's time to set boundaries. Don't announce the boundaries. Don't expect resolution or confession. In the future, don't stay with your parents and handle your own business. We've had all the badges, right? That's really interesting. But I do disagree with this badge. I don't think it's fair to retrospectively say, oh, well, you suck here because you set boundaries, but you, you're not supposed to announce them. Like, no, you are allowed to say why you're doing what you're doing. If you're going no contact, I think it's the right thing to do to be like, hey, I'm not talking to you because I think you've wronged me and you've not been supportive during this time. Even if you're not sure, you can definitely tell that someone is still being an asshole to you by the way that they're treating you around the evidence of whether or not they emptied the bottle. Who the frick? I'm still stuck on this point. Who leaves the bottle? It's so bizarre to me. Clearly a very divisive one on the forum though, even though I am being very strict and confident with my bad. Peaches, get your fuzzy little butts downstairs in the comments section. Let's have a chat. What do you think? I'd be so intrigued. This is definitely my big discussion point of today's video. All right, let's do another floop. Am I the drummer for not making clothes for all of my siblings? Okay, let's go. I'm a 17 year old girl and I've got full siblings, 14, 10, 9 and 6, step siblings, 17, 15, 13, 10 and 8, and half siblings, 4, 2, 1 and 1, as in twin, that's, or, or half siblings from different sides, both of which are one years old. That's really interesting. Oh, that's, that's a big family. Christmas must be expensive. <laughs> With all the kids, money is pretty tight. I can appreciate that. When we go clothes shopping, we have to go to thrift stores and only get a few items each. The rest we get hand-me-downs for free from older cousins or aunts and uncles. Whilst I'm grateful and the clothes that we get are never damaged or anything, all of them are secondhand and not really catered to any of our style. I can so see, especially as a 17 year old, as you're like getting into your sense of self and understanding who you are, like I can so see why this would be very frustrating. I wanted something new and that fits my interests. So when I was 14, I learned to sew over the years and I got pretty good at it. Go you, I'm happy for you, my love. I've only made myself a few items like a skirt and a dress, but my siblings, especially my sisters, have noticed and asked me to make something for them. It takes me a while to make clothes, understandably, so I only made one thing each for the ones that asked. I got them done extra quick than usual because it's summer holidays, but a few weeks ago, my parents noticed 
noticed that my sisters had a few new clothes and found out that I made them. They were really happy. That's cute. Mm, I'm seeing where this is going though. And I'm like, why are parents so deranged this episode? And they asked me to make the clothes for everyone for back to school clothes. No, I thought, I thought you were just gonna be like one item each. Back to school clothes. They didn't want a whole wardrobe each, but they wanted me to make about a week's worth of clothes for each kid. So wait, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 siblings. That is so many. That is more than a football team. Still, 14 siblings mm, seems that like three of them are not school age. So you're expected to make clothes for 11 people. A week's worth for 11 people. OP says this would be very difficult for me. Babe, it would be difficult for anyone. If they were to go to a seamstress, a professional who does this for a living, do you know how long this would take? Do you know how much they would charge? Let's just do the math real quick. I'm not very good at mathing, but we're going to math. We just uh, deciphered somehow. I'm doing this alone, so I'm feeling a little bit nervous about it. But we deciphered that this is like 11 kids. And that's not including yourself, by the way. That's 11 times a week's worth. So five, that's 55 items of clothing. You are 17. You going to school? It's going to take up your whole summer holidays. Let alone school time. That was math, I think. It takes a week or so to make one thing and making that much would take a lot more time. Absolutely. 55 items of clothing. But wait a second. The math goes further. Because that is if you were making one item. Assuming you're making tops and bottoms and not just dresses for everyone, that doubles to 110. We're still mathing. Oh my God. 110, where it takes a week for one item of clothing is 110 weeks. And 110 weeks divided by four weeks is over two years. This is dumb. This is so dumb. What are, what are your parents thinking? They are, you know what? They're not thinking. That's what's happened. They're like, oh, you've done this. Cool. Do it for everyone and do it for this much. Are they going to pay you for the materials? Do you do they realize the length of time? Probably not because I've not seen it. OP says, I just don't have the time to make 13 plus pieces of clothes when school is starting so soon and I can't afford all the materials. Wait, they're not even going to pay you for the materials. Fabric thread ETC. My parents don't want to pay because the whole reason they're asking is they don't want to buy. I said no to making the clothes, but apparently my parents told my siblings their idea and how I refused it. So all of them are now unhappy that they won't get custom made clothes and will only get secondhand clothes again. I can't believe that your parents have done that. That is such a bad parenting move. So bad. Just the audacity of being like, hey, child, you will be the clothes shop because we don't want to buy them from a clothes shop. I'm, I'm astonished. I'm astounded. I am flabbergasted. And I feel bad because technically I could make it all, but then I'd have no spending money for my own things and no spare time for a few months. And my parents are disappointed and my siblings are sad. So I'm at the drama. No, OP. Biggest, biggest, not the drama ever. Do you know what's happening? I'm going to be really honest here. Your parents have been bad parents. Absolutely in this moment, they've been bad parents. To ask you is one thing. And that is, okay, I can see how it can come from ignorance and they won't know. But to expect you to do the cost and to make you feel now like you are bad because of the way that they've communicated this to other people, right? For one, using up your time on your summer holidays and your school time, not okay. And your budget, which is not also to be spent on all of these siblings, that is not okay either. It is not your responsibility to look after your siblings. You never asked for yourself or for your siblings to be brought onto this planet. That is something that your parents have done. That is something that your parents have responsibility for, not you. And I also think there's an elephant in the room here, which is the size of your family. I have my own thoughts about big families families. Personally, I don't think they work very successfully. Obviously, when there are blended families, you don't always have a choice as to who you're bringing together. But in terms of intentionally having children, I do think there's an environmental impact that we have to think about with how many kids we're bringing into the world, but also an emotional impact. Because as parents, there's typically only two of you. And there's only so much love and time and attention and budget resource that two people can give. Because now you find yourself in a situation where there are 14 kids to look after. That is so money. Unless you're like a mega mega bougie rich spenny spenny person and even though that's only for financial resource there is no way you're going to be able to give all of your 14 kids the love and time and attention that they deserve for healthy growing up and development and I'd hazard a guess that that is why you as parents have only figured out after three freaking years of your daughter learning to sew which is a really cool skill that that's what she's doing and that she's kind enough to be creating things for her other siblings how lovely is that how did you not know that this is a skill that she's had and has been developed how are you not supporting her with that and telling her 
her what a wonderful job that she's doing for three years and how is it that you can have the audacity to assume that she can therefore take out her time and her money to help out the rest of your kids in that way and make her feel bad about it because of the way that you communicated it bad 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 parenting biggest not the drama for uop and your parents definitely need to do better i don't blame people for not having money 99.9% of the time it is not somebody's fault the majority of the time when you're working with the cards that you've been dealt whether that be a timeline like a like a series of events that's happened in your life or things that you have inherited or marginalized characteristics there's a reason why people are in the financial situations that they are in so i do not in any way blame the parents for having to thrift shop or take hand me downs most of the time it happens and specifically in these unprecedented and weird times it's happening more and more but what i do blame the parents for and absolutely shun the parents for is for making your kid feel like they are the responsibility for that they are not they are absolutely not it is rude and you need to do better not the drama it's your parents responsibility to clothe the kids not yours couldn't agree more not the drama use your uno reverse card on your parents oh that's so funny the idea that you could just whap whap like one of these out at any moment <laughs> gather your siblings explain to all of them that as much as you love to make a special item for them you're just a kid and a student as well and you don't have much money or time to be able to do that and your parents are refusing to help by at least buying the materials for you tell them that it's a hobby and that even if you wanted to time isn't in your favor but if you're interested you can teach them some skills so they can make their own or personalize some of the clothes that they already have and if they have savings for them to buy materials you can make one for them if you have the time but that they have to be involved i really like your suggestions i think it's really important to have that communication with your siblings absolutely some of them are very young and they're not going to understand but an important step to do and customize nonetheless i thought when you said uno reverse card you were suggesting something else which i'm also going to just let float into the ether maybe you should tell your parents to learn to sew and do it themselves seeing as they are the parents after all you might have a sewing machine you might be doing things by hand i'm assuming you have a sewing machine in which case maybe your parents will want to use that they can learn like you learned and they can put the time and the money into clothing their own damn children absolutely not the drama i'm a sewer i know how long it takes to make clothes when i read that first i read this as sewer <laughs> i got very confused i also know how much it can cost to buy fabric and thread and to factor in either buying or drafting patterns too is a lot to yeah. i tried to make something once and it really did cost more it was fun i loved it but it cost a lot more than if i was to just buy it it's often the way with diy things people are like ah oh, i could save so much money sometimes you can sometimes you really don't but it does make you appreciate the value of clothes i think it's very clear here my love that you are not the drama i'm sorry that you've been put in this position i hope you are able especially as the oldest right in this family setup to understand your position in this family and to understand what should be your parents responsibilities and what should be yours because in families as big as this especially when it seems that you're all quite close as well which is such a wonderful thing to see it's very easy to feel like the older sibling that you have to take on the responsibility you do not deserve that responsibility remember as well that in these situations they are all your siblings you're viewing all of them as your siblings but as you should if that is what you want to do i'm not damning you for that i'm not saying it's a bad thing what i'm saying is there are other parents involved you are one person trying to look after 13 of your siblings whereas your two parents also don't do that you have half siblings involved which means that there's going to be at least four and then step siblings which means those people will also have other people so that's like at least six other adults that are sharing the responsibility of these 14 kids and there's only one of you so don't feel bad babe it's not your position you didn't sign up for it and you should not ever have that responsibility just the fact that you're feeling that way means that your parents need to do better all right let's do one more shaploop am i the drama for trying to force my friend to eat this is coming from starry a fellow Hello, Peach. Hi, my love. Thank you for submitting and I'm at the drama to us. And anybody else who'd like to do so, there's a link to our website downstairs in the description box. Peaches lets you unite and help Starry out. My friend, a 14 year old girl, has a mildly severe nut allergy. However, she's incredibly aware and reads all food packaging so it doesn't act up much. She had an allergy attack two days in a row and started panicking because there was nothing that should have caused it. This was all happening whilst we were at camp with a limited cafeteria. It sounds like maybe there is something that's causing it and things aren't being labeled very well at camp. Hence why this is happening. Let's read on so the nurse who treated both attacks told her not to eat foods with more than one ingredient e.g fruits or vegetables which would be hard in general but basically impossible here yeah we also later found out that wasn't actually an order that any of the other nurses had agreed on that is so weird 
<laughs> to say that and not like have the provisions in place at camp but let's read on she went through the whole day only eating two bananas and she's a musical theatre major which is very physically intensive anyway we went to get dinner me and two of my friends were trying to help get her to eat because she had another rehearsal afterwards and she'd eaten basically nothing this is how eating disorders are developed this is so not okay you need to be having adults providing support for you what camp is this she was obviously scared that anything she ate would give her an allergic reaction after this going on for about 45 minutes i called a counselor over because it's very concerning for her well-being good for you i think that's a really kind thing for you to do as a friend this freaked her out and i could tell that she was crying and i felt bad but eating is especially important to her because she's got a condition where she faints a lot and she is a as you said doing something very physically intensive and the reason that she's eating right now is to do with a like emotional block a mental block that she needs to try and fix she really needs support i really think you did the right thing i didn't see her again before rehearsal but when she came back i hugged her and i apologized for making her feel like i was suffocating her because all i cared about was that she was safe i'm on the rocks about it because i know that it wasn't the best way to treat the situation but i care more about her well-being babe you are not the drama unless there's more to the story here that you're than you're saying you're clearly feeling guilty because you're sort of talking about like suffocating her but honestly it sounds to me like you're just being there for a friend and it's a really important thing for you to do it's a mark of a good friend as long as you're doing it right and as long as you're listening to her boundaries and not like you sat there and like shoved a banana down her throat you were like hey i think you need to speak to someone and you've got somebody who is well more equipped to deal with the situation a qualified counselor to help her and that is a really big step actually i don't forgot we had this badge no drama here that is my badge no drama here you did the right thing but your friend also isn't being the drama it's unfortunate that this has happened but it's not her fault and it's absolutely understandable why she would have developed this fear of foods here specifically i think maybe where the drama does lie is with the camp clearly there's something going on where they are not adequately catering to somebody's food needs we don't know how she's reacting but it must be exhausting to have a nut allergy reaction multiple days in a row and to not be eating very much food and to be given the advice that you should only be eating single source foods like food with one ingredient which as you're saying in camp is just not possible the camp should absolutely be providing non-nutty food to the people who have nut allergies they should absolutely be contacting the parents and being like hey this has happened to your child and the parents should be saying hey camp you're not doing your job look after my kid better you're just being a good friend allowing those cogs to happen by bringing the support in that you need well done you all right this has been i don't know why but i feel spicy after this time on the drama <laughs> Did you enjoy this episode, my loves? If so, give it a thumbs up. Please feel free to help Gorgeous Starry downstairs. I hope the rest of the camp went well. I hope your friend didn't take unkindly to you providing that help to them. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. Subscribing super duper helps me out. I'd really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time with another video. Be kind and have a great day. Bye.